computer. Hey, we about to get at it. We are about to jump into another Bible study. I'm present with uh, Bill and Marquise. Uh, Thursdays, we have been in the New Testament. So what I'm going to do is flip my screen and share my screen so you can see what we are actually uh, reading today. So let me get here, share screen, and then let me get the uh, Uversion Bible app up is what I prefer to use. Um, and only because it has so many different variations and copies of the word. Um, and then obviously I'm a separate guy too. Uh, so real quick, before we get started, let us get us a prayer in. Uh, Father, in the name of Yahshua, uh, which we, you will hear Yahshua as Jesus, but you should know who we're talking about. And then as we obviously say, uh, Yahuwah, we are talking about the most high God, the God, the father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and Lord, we thank you right now for the opportunity to dive into your word. Uh, this is not a Bible study, but we are studying the Bible. Father, give us clarity, understanding, uh, discernment right now, revelation, empower us, Lord God, and let, let it not just be knowledge build up, but knowledge apply, Father. So um, as we learn these things, let us First of all, look at ourselves, Father, and, and 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 remove the plank from our own eyes, Lord God, so that we can continue to help our brothers move the speck where you would get the glory. We thank you for it in the powerful name of our Savior. Amen. All right. So um, we are in Matthew 9. We're picking up from where we were last time. Um, and so we're going to start right here. So this is Jesus heals a palsy man uh it says and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city and behold they brought to him a man sick of the palsy cerebral palsy lying on a bed and jesus seeing their faith said unto the sick of the palsy son be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven and behold Certain of the scribes, it said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? I'm in verse five. For whether is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or say, arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, and which had given such power unto men. And so you see the glorification of God uh, by the performing of miracles, which gives you an indication of how these things would be able to continue to go forward if God can be glorified. The call of Matthew. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew. That's why we're in Matthew, because he walked with Jesus, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house. Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why eateth what your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So I think it's key to take a look at some of these verses here. Um, it's actually very, very powerful when you put it in perspective. Um, people standing around judging because, you know, you're a believer and you're in the midst of sinners. How else are they going to get saved is what I always say. Now, I ain't saying you're supposed to be doing what they're doing. And I'm not saying that you're supposed to be engaged in their their ways and lifestyle. Uh, but how else the sick be healed except for they come in contact with the physician? And then I also want you to see that Jesus came to meet at a house. 
They weren't at a church. And so he was coming there to dwell amongst other people who were not part of the church. I think it's important to see that um, because the work happens outside of the church. The people that are getting together on Sundays, those are supposedly to save people anyway, for the most part. Everybody, every week, saved, sealed, signed, delivered, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think it's important to say that. And then also he said he came not to call the righteous. If you're already righteous, he doesn't need to rectify you. But there's the but, sinners to repentance. So repent. Kimball, you got something? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love that scripture because there is a spot. I love exactly what you say because it is right. We can't, we have to go amongst them, but there's also a key there. Just because we go amongst them, we cannot partake the sin that they're engaging in. Correct. That's the big part. I mean, we 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 like to say go amongst sinners, but how are we representing ourselves amongst the sinners? Because he walked amongst sinners, but how did he represent himself amongst the sinners? Amen. Amen. Bill, you got anything, sir? Nope, nope. You guys summed that up right there. It's exactly what it says. And uh, but yeah, you, we obviously know that he didn't do anything because he walked perfect. Um, but yeah, how else are you going to get a hold of sinners unless you put yourself amongst them? They're not going to come running to you, you know. So that's for sure. Good. All right. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, "Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but?" Thy disciples fast not. And so here it is, somebody not part of the faith coming up asking questions about Jesus in the faith. But it's okay. It's okay. And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? What is he talking about? He's talking about for the simple fact that he's not gone. And so his disciples are not in a point when they have to fast just yet. Now it says, no man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill up, take up from that garment, and the rent is made worth. It's worse, stay with me. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. So what are they talking about here? What are they talking about? You want to take a crack? I, what I feel like if you apply it to today, um, but what I've always heard, I don't know how true this is. Fair enough, fair enough. But it's like, and I don't even want to say names because I don't want to offend any preacher out there, even if it's a celebrity preacher. But let's just say my favorite preacher. If I took his message and I tried to reproduce the copy of what he already, that's like taking old wine skin and trying to put it into new wine skin. Is that is that anywhere close to what like I've heard? Like I could be Jimmy Swagger. I'm just asking. I've heard that almost. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. That old wine skin is almost like I'm trying to take the old church message today and apply it to today's world. Okay. 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 This is again my close. I think I, I so I I think which from what you said there, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you, but not necessarily the message per se. Okay. But okay, the the ceremonial, yeah, the 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 the, the, the law, the law, the law. That's the law. old wine skin trying to apply it to today's new wine skin. Correct. That's the way I take it. Okay, that's the way I that's the way I take it. Bill, what do you think? I'm sitting here and I'm just trying to read this over and over and trying to really. I'm gonna, what I'm going to actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into another translation and see what that actually. That's saying somewhere else, if you don't mind. Well, you know, he talks in parables, yes, so it may not be here. In it's been a while since I've been through Matthew. He may talk about it later. Sure. So, sure. if we want to bookmark it, unless you just want to take a crack, but go ahead and nope. see, we see what you see there. Okay. And then also, um, you have multiple layers. This shows up in Mark, and it also shows up in Luke. 
So as we do studies, what I like to do is I would go look at Mark 2, 1, Mark 2, 18 and Luke 5, 33. And then when you go here, um, let me pull these up. Somebody remember we're at 914. I'll stay here. You'll stay there? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go over to Mark 2. <laughs> Marcus. Marquise. No. <laughs> right. Nah. Nah. All right. All right. <laughs> what was that I was trying to go to? Mark oh. or Luke. You said Mark and okay. Luke. Mark 218. So actually, yeah, let me actually Mark 218. Let me get here. Mark 218. And then we coming back. What you find over there, Bill? Here's how it reads in another translation. The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. But no one puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and a worse tear results. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wineskin burst, and the wine pours out, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. Good. Okay. So let's flip over, though. Uh, we do need to look over this, though. Let's flip over. Uh, we're, we, well, you don't have to. I can read it. Um, but we were in Matthew 9, 14. 9, 14, right? Yeah, we were Matthew 9, 14. And we're going to flash back to Luke, uh, get over to Luke 5, 33. But I'm going to read this here from um, where we are right now, which is uh, Mark 2. I'm at verse 18. And it says, and the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast. So the disciples of John and Pharisees used to fast. So they were used to fasting and they came and they come and say unto him, why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not talking to Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, which we heard this in the other uh, uh, gospel, can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? Then it goes a little bit further. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. So that's why they weren't fasting. Now, who's the bridegroom? Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Mm -hmm. And so they gave the answer there. And then it says, no man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man put of new wine into old bottles, Else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred, but wine must be put in the new Sabbath. Now, um, I want to keep reading here because this this jumped out at me. Go ahead. There's something you passed by that I can't. Stop. We went, yes, sir. We stop went, me. Stop. We went back. Can we go back to where he says, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be. So he was, for, he was already right here foreseeing and telling his crucifixion. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's stay here before we go any further, though, because let's go down to 23. Um, because we talk about these things and, and then we get back to the study. I'm not getting off base, but uh, 23, it says, and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath. You know, the three of us have frequent Sabbath talks, and I think it's always fair to look at. And his disciples began, and as they went, to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisee said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? So these guys were just plucking ears of corn on the Sabbath. And the people that studied the law felt like it was unlawful to do this. So it just goes to show the ridiculousness of, of that observation. What book, but, is, but, what book is that in? We're, we are in, that's good. Yeah, yes. Well, I'm not talking about observing the Sabbath. I'm just talking about how ridiculous it was that these Pharisees in this particular story went to them yes. because somebody was picking some corn on the Sabbath and had literally something to say. And these are studied, well, principled um, holders of the, go uh, not the gospel, because Christ hadn't, was no gospel they were talking about, of the law. And they had something to say because somebody was picking up some corn. And, and, and the sneaky three dots okay. took me back to Deuteronomy okay. 23, 25, which says, when you come into the standing corn of your neighbor, you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you shall not move a sickle unto your neighbor's standing corn. Where, how does that tie in to what, that, what he just said? I don't it, know. Took us, 
that's the three dots took me back there from reading where you were in Mark. Yeah. It took me back there. Why is it talking about porn here? Do you know? I'm just this, this little side thing here. No, I mean, whatever you read there was talking about. Uh, here's a porn. The same thing we just, just, talked just they, about. they were talking about um, uh, Levitical laws. Because where is that at? That's De Deuteronomy 23 and 25. So it would have been something that came down in the Levitical laws. But I, from what it sounded like you read is they were essentially saying is you're allowed to go ahead and like grab some corn to eat. Okay. But don't grab no sickle don't make and don't 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 come it. over here cutting date. Yep. Nah, okay. no, yep. no, because that's exactly. that. But you just want to grab some corn to eat. Okay, go ahead. But you know, but don't be in here cutting this down. But, but that ain't stealing corn. If you got the sickle, you know. But just to steal a corn to eat, like the sand, still a loaf of bread to feed your family. Is that what this is here? Um, I don't think it would even necessarily be stealing because. You know everything the the trees and stuff produce. Okay. You know, I mean, if you just grab the ear, ain't nobody missing that. But if you come with the sickle, your intent is not to put something in your belly. For now, your intent is to take from me. Then right. you know what I'm saying. I got you. And ain't nobody gonna be mad about you eating a piece of bread or you know. Okay. And that's the way I look at it. What you think, Bill? I, I think it's exactly correct. If okay. you if you take to satisfy your hunger that you have right now because you're hungry. Okay, cool. But when you take more to satisfy your hungry right now. Then that's basically building up a storehouse, so to speak, and that becomes stealing. Yeah. You're, you're now taking from somebody else for your benefit later on. And no, I mean, if you need to eat now, let's we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll wait till the next time and we'll deal with it then. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. All right. And we are 24. And the Pharisee said unto him, Behold, why do they do on the Sabbath that day, which is not lawful? And he said to him, have you never read what David did when he had need and was hungered and he and they that were with him? You you good? I'm just getting that three dots while you're uh, saying uh, Okay. <laughs> okay. And how he went into the house of God in the days of uh, Abiathar, the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto him, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Oh, that was good right there. Therefore, the son of man is the Lord also of the Sabbath. Powerful. Let me get this right here. What book is that in? Mark 2. Mark 2. Mark 2, 27. And 28, I'm going to bookmark those, but we're going to get back to where we were. You got something? I got the three dollars. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Let's go. Took me back to David. Okay. First Samuel 21 and 1. Then David uh, to Nob to Amalek, the priest, and Ahim, elect, was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, why are you alone and no man with you? And David said unto Amalek, the priest, the king hath commanded me a business and let and had said unto me, let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send you and what I have commanded you. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now for there, what is under your hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, there is no common bread under my hand, but there is hollow bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him of a truth, Women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out and the vessels of the young men are holy and the bread is in manner common. Yeah, though it was sanctified this day in a vessel. So the priest gave him hollow bread for there was no bread there, but the show bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Mm -hmm. So that was the three dots it took me from when we, he was just talking about the loaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The story of Samuel. So basically, he's just still, once again, always quoting something. Most of his parables are quoting something that was already that happened in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, we were at Matthew 9, 14. Uh, or we went 17. down for 17. Thank you. Oh, we were going to go look at Luke 2. I'm sorry. Luke Let's two. go. I'm Luke 5, 30. Luke 5, 33 through 39, just Luke's account of what happened. Luke 5, 33, 39. I'm going to jump over here real quick. Luke 5, 33. Luke 5, 33. Through 39? Yeah. Okay, Let yeah. me see. 
And they said unto him, why do the disciples of John fast often? So now it's um, Jesus's disciples. So, and they said unto him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And, uh, and likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. He said unto them, can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? Talking about him. But then the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and they shall fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a, a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new make a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And so you always put these together in understanding the transition from the law to the New Testament. And then, oh, yes, sir? No, no, I'm okay. Okay. No, I like that. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But the new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straight away desire it new, for he said, the old is better. So what does that mean? Let me compare this. Oh, yeah, I'm comparing that to so let, me, let me see here. <laughs> that just let me see. Oh, I ain't got no compare function on here. Somebody got compare function on there. No I man mean, also yeah. having drunk old wine straight away. For what? What is he saying here? Hold on. Oh, I get it. What you got? Okay, CV says. <laughs> okay, I could be wrong. This might be me. No. But what I interpret from this, CV version says, no one wants new wine after drinking old wine. Okay. They say the old wine is better. So people don't want to change. That's right. People don't want to change. That is right there. That's people don't what want to change. They are comfortable staying in the old one. That's so true. Therefore, therefore, they're trying to hold on to old shit yeah. while trying to put new shit with it, and it just fucking falls apart. It doesn't yeah. work. So you have to take and make it all new. Correct. Or none at all. Yeah. And, and yep. So new on the outside and new on the inside. And that you know? would be applying to the law. I yeah, and just, just, just to your life. Think yeah. about it. Like you can you can dress up and look like you're renewed, yeah. but you need to be new on the inside and out. But it does start in the inside. But if you try to look new and you still old, ain't gonna work. Just, no. Yep. Just like hot or cold. Yeah. Same thing. You yeah. can't be lukewarm. Yeah. Yeah. You're lukewarm here, is what happens. Is yeah. 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 That's I, I received that. I do too. I do too. All right. So uh, let me get back out of Luke and let's jump back over here to Matthew 9, 14, where we were. We started in Matthew 9, 9, 17, 9, 17 is where we are. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have, uh, so yeah, we just finished up with that, the new wine. All right. So we are at 18. Mm -hmm. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him saying, my daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live. And I just want to say, look at the faith of these people that your daughter is dead and you still got faith that he's going to bring her back. And Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. So she did touch it for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Now, um, I want you to look at this and many pastors and preachers have broke this particular uh, very familiar piece of Matthew down. Um, so I'm going to talk about it real quick. Um, and so it's very important to see that she, her faith led her to go just to the point to touch it and felt she would be healed by that man of God. So healing was, was, was real and it still is real, but she knew that she would be made whole. And um, some pastors talk about wholeness. Some people don't talk about wholeness, 
but wholeness is um, being fulfilled, you know, having um, all the areas of your life uh, rectify because uh, I think we read later that this lady with the issue of blood, like spend all of her money, doctors, all this stuff. So to make her whole is more than just to stop the bleeding. And then just think about the anguish and the pain and the turmoil that she went through being an outcast for 12 years, bloody. She would have been uh, not a, allowed around the people, you know, it would have been, she would have been considered unclean because of that blood flow for 12 years. Sure. And so making her whole was more than just stopping her blood flow. Low. Um, but Jesus turned about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. So he wanted her comforter. You know, can you imagine what your mind would be going through after that length of uh, turmoil? Thy faith has made thee whole. And so the Bible's clear that he without faith is impossible to please God. And the woman was made whole from that hour. You have something, Kimmel? Oh, I was just going to say the, the part that they say about spend all their money. I think that's a fluff. I, I can't find that anywhere. It's in no other. Uh, I, I, it, I have not seen that part of that story that we like to hear. That okay. spend all their money and all their back. Okay. Let me, let me, let, let me look, let, let me look before we go any further. Please help me find that. If okay. It, if it exists. Okay. It may, I, I, it may not, it may I not. I think that's the, it may not. the emotional fluff of that message. It could, it could very well be. <laughs> So, <laughs> woman with the, all her money and so, went to all the doctors in town. Where is that at? Really? So, I just want to make something clear while he's looking that up, and and I, we'll talk about something that we was looking at another scripture the other day. We're going to get to the part with Lazarus and the napkin and the stuff like that. See, when Jesus, when something happened, and he turned to her and said, "Daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole." Mm -hmm. The woman was whole from that hour. He said to the other one, "You're healed." He was made whole that moment. Mm -hmm. it, it it finalizes what happened. When he said, loose him and let him go, why did he not say that immediately he was set loose in the gar and, and the napkin? Well, listen, that, we're going to get to that later. Lupin ran we're, from his so face that's and, coming, that's, into the swine. That, that's coming later. Let's <laughs> stay on this. All right. This all right. Mark, just... Mark, 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 five, Mark, <laughs> right. five, Mark, 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 five. Mark, okay. five. Mark, five is where the story picks up. So like I always like to say in our investigative studies, we have to compare all three yes. or four gospel versions. Okay. So very quickly, um, you can jump down to. I'm at that Mark five and 20. Uh, 25, 25, 25. And it says here, Mark 5, 25, um, sure. it says, and a certain woman with, with had an issue of blood 12 years and suffered many things of many phys physicians and had spent all that she had, okay. spent all that she had. So it is there, um, maybe not here in, in Matthew, but we do always want to just cross check every, okay. yeah. which call it. Yeah. Well, thank you for helping me find that. No problem, sir. All right. So we are at, um, uh da, 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 22 we are picking back up at matthew 9 22 but jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good good comfort thy faith has made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour and jesus when jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise he said unto them give place for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. So it's almost like today where people don't believe that these miracles can still happen. And it's almost like, <laughs> but no, no he's, come on, you do anything. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by hand and made a rose. And so he took her by hand. And as we talked about Lazarus, so, I, you know, it seems like he just probably took her by hand and she, and the fame hereof went abroad into all the land. All right, 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said unto him, believe ye that I'm able to do this. And they said unto him, yea, Lord. So, they were in belief that they could receive this. So clearly 
certain people believed, certain people didn't. Same way today. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And so I've said this, and Kimball might call me out for being flower because it's not Bible, but it, it sounds really good, but it rings to some error or truth. You don't get from God what you deserve. You get what you believe. Mm. You don't get from God what you deserve. Shout out to Larry Mack. He used to say it all the time, but you get from him what you believe because without faith, like if you don't truly believe it, I ain't talking about hope, but like you truly believe God for it, not hope. And that belief is based on lining up with his will. I think it's yours. Yeah. As long as there's that ingredient. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can accept that. I ain't talking about believing a million dollars going to show up. That's not even realistic. He ain't right. tell you that. Right. He never said that. He never, ever said that. He never said that. But like, if he speaks to you, however he speaks to you in your word, in your prayer, your preachers, your messages, your, your thoughts, your dreams, your day visions, your night visions, if your dog or cat speaks to you or Uriel himself shows up or Michelangelo shows up, I, however he speaks to you, but in your faith and without that faith, it's impossible. Flower, what you think? I mean, I personally think it is flower. I think, okay. I think it's a flowery message that's been brought across and preached into churches to death today. They okay. believe and believe and believe. There's people in, all throughout the Bible, even in the books that they've taken out, yeah. that have believed and believed and believed, and Yahuwah still did not allow it to happen. Like, what did they believe? Like, what are you talking about, David? What did he believe? He, he, he had an... Uh, 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 Hold on. What did he, he believe? A ridiculous uh, sexual relationship and had a child that he begged and prayed. And the Bible says he was so repentant and he begged and said, Lord, please let this baby live. And he believed it. No, he was and asking. He that's a request. No, he no that's a no, request. He believed, no, Go Bible get the scripture. Go get the scripture. Okay. Yeah, let's okay. get scripture for this okay. because I can I can buy what you're trying to say. And, and and I can respect you even have an opinion, but that story, he was a request. Mm -hmm. And so he was asking God, please, but, you know, we all going to go to God and please, you know, please help me. But well, I'm just saying he's believing. He was believing that God. Was going okay. To well, so, yeah. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. The heck was that? It's my, oh, okay. My, my thing. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, being able to discern the difference sometimes between what you feel about what you're asking in faith and what's his will and so on and so forth. Like, so if, if in, in the position that, uh, Yahushua was in when he said, you know, um, you know, if it's possible take this cup for me, however, not my will be done, but your will be done. Yeah. But if he believed that that would have happened, would it have happened? If what would have happened? If he would have believed that the father would have honored that, would it have happened? So you act like God forced him to do that. No, no, not a, not a forcing. I believe right. it was just, it right. was a prophecy and it was the will of the father to be done. It was something that had to happen. So did he have so a he choice? So he couldn't will himself out of it. So he couldn't have a choice? So he, so Jesus didn't have a choice. I mean, I think he could have had a choice. You don't think he, he made a to. sacrifice for everybody? Oh, like he made he a sacrifice big time. Who? Oh, so big time. So, so he know what his will was. He had a mission when he came. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not contradicting what you said. That's not the point. It's the, it's the, um, you know, sometimes where we can get mixed up, where the will might fall, and what we're really asking for. Gotcha. You know, because you know, even though. That was a very, very, you know, horrible thing that he had to go through. He couldn't have, he could, it's like he almost couldn't have believed himself out of it. It's something that had to happen. He had to go through that because it was the will of God. You, you, you just couldn't make that not happen. It was the will of the father and it was going down. It was going to happen. The prophecy and just, yeah, I don't care. It was going to happen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So second Samuel. Let me go here. I'm going to go here. Bookmark her site here. Nine. Matthew 9, 27, 2 Samuel. Chapter 12. I'm almost there, too. 2 Samuel. We just did first. So we have 1 Samuel. 
on that study, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 13. Okay, let me get down here with you, sir. Verse 13, I'm highlighted through here. Okay, let's go. Yep. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin. You shall die, not die. Okay, so you ain't going to die because of your sin. How be it, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto you shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house. Oh, so the judgment was already there. You're not going to die, but the child is going to die. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child. Mm -hmm. And David fasted mm -hmm. and went in, lay all night upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. Yeah. So what does, did, you look, did, you, is, did you Google Basashi? Yeah, that's what, what it means. That's, that's sought and after, searching after, going after. Lord, I'm praying. I'm in laying before your face. Please don't do this. Yeah, Let me keep this. Save me. So, so, so he believed and believed and believed and believed some more. But because of his sin, he still had to face that child dying. So, so I, so, so I think there's a difference in between begging for something not to happen and believing something not going to happen. The man of God already told him what was going to happen. You ain't going to die, but the kid going to die. And so David believed the kid was going to die. He, that's what he believed. And so when he besought the Lord, he fervently went after the Lord asking God to change his mind. He believed he was going to kill him. That's why he so besought the Lord because he knew that this kid was going to die. Now his fervent well, request. I, I do see that. Yeah, yeah, his fervent request. He, he, he received. He, okay, he, I can take that. Yeah, that he received the fact that the kid was gonna die. Yes, That's where his well, faith was but he still, he he yeah, still, still was believing. Thank God was hoping, 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 hoping believing is almost the same. Almost but different. So hope is like, oh, please, 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 a hope and change. You hope you hit the lotto, but do we really believe it? No, we hope we do. But do we believe it? No. When we go play Powerball, do I really think I got the winning ticket? Heck no. no. But do I hope I do? Oh, yes, I hope I do. Right. And I hope you do if you got it. Right. And you. But do I believe it? Not really. Right. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> hope. But I don't believe it. I'll be a liar to say I believe. That's now, a good way to that's, that's a good difference. David was wrong. He knew he was wrong. Just like when we know we're wrong sometimes. It's, oh, please, can we have mercy? But we don't deserve anything from him. Nothing. But you don't believe David was believing in his heart that God was going to no, change he, he was praying. Because the way he, they said he was fast and he didn't want he was to trying, He was trying to do everything he can to get God to change his mind. Judgment was already pronounced. You're going to live. The boy is dead. Oh, please, oh, God. You know, please change your mind. <laughs> he reacted. You know, but I do, I do, I do think it is like flower. So I do think it is like flower, the phrase of you don't get from God what you uh, deserve, but you get from God what you believe. But then it is some trueness to it. Okay. Sure. Not Bible, but it is, it is a, a very fluffy and it would lead somebody to believe that. I'm going to believe for a, a brand new bitch. Yeah. I'm have it not going to happen. You hope you yeah, do. Just not going to happen. I'm telling but you. I don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And if you do, great. Yeah. You know, but. <laughs> You know, it might be a brand new Pinto before it bends. Why you got a brand new Benz? Why can't you have a 20 year old A to B? It's weird. Like, I mean, I've seen never days for now. Like, you know, might be different. Yeah, you know, 60 days for now might be different. Ridiculous. Right. ridiculous. All right, I'm going to finish up this chapter, guys. Uh, this is good, though. This is good stuff. Oh, where are we at? Back at Matthew 9. Uh, Matthew 98. 9. Thank you, sir. I'm going to jump back here. And once I'm done with oh, Matthew, oh, I'm going to oh. have somebody else pick up. Matthew, this is good. Matthew 9, 26, 26. Thank you. Okay, Matthew 9. It's after he just raised the girl up. Okay. Matthew 9, 26. 27. Two blind men received sight. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. 
And when they he was come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said unto them. So where was he doing the work? Once again, he's pulling up in people's cribs. Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, yea, Lord. And they touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, see that no man know it. But they, when they departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man. So where? Not in the church. They brought him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And so possessed with the devil is mental health, folks. He was either schizophrenic or he was bipolar <coughs> or he was manic depressant, whatever these psych psychological terms that they psychiatric terms that they name, he was possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, so what happened? They cast the devil out. This is the method to healing, in my opinion, mental health is casting that demon out. Mm -hmm. And the dumb spake and the multitudes marveled saying it was never so in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he casteth out devils through the prince of devils. Here's these haters again. Mm -hmm. 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages. So he was out and about teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Can you stop? Yes, sir. I like that, Dane. That's why I like going back through the word each and every time because you see something else like you just said. I mean, it says he went about the cities and villages. So like you said, why do we have to feel like that his presence can only be visited amongst a building on Sunday morning? No way. It's ridiculous. He went amongst the cities and villages. That means he got out there amongst the people. Yes. That's what I like. Yep, he was out there. Yeah, he's pulling up. He at your house. He at your building. He may be at your church, but he's out there. Right. So the revival idea of going from church to church, I think it's a good idea, but what about the public, the people? Yeah. Revival going church to church, that's all church people. Right. That's all church. That's more of a fellowship thing, but they all, most of the people coming to revivals is supposedly saved. Most of them okay. invite a friend or family member out, but these are, that's being around the same people. Ain't nobody getting saved. If you always in the same spot with the same people, ain't nobody but, getting saved. But when you do a revival, isn't a revival meant to bring in people that need to find Christ? I'll be honest with you. You have to show me revival in the book. Did you look? It may, it may not even like what is like, show me an example of what, like, I don't even know what it's supposed to be. I think it's just another name to get people out. There it is. Revival of what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Like, what is it? Like, and I'd have been to a couple quote unquote revivals, what they were, they were night services that were two or three hours that I could have missed out on. <laughs> that norm, same thing I see on Sunday. That was my experience with revivals. That's why I truly don't know what a revival really is. Okay. You know? <laughs> or what it's supposed to be, you know? Okay. Okay. Like night watch. Like what is that? What well, is it supposed to be? Watch night. No, yeah. Watch night services. Yeah. What yeah. is it? Well, it was watch night services back in the day from the holiness churches. I'm it, talking about biblical. What is it? it, it it's a fluff. It it's, doesn't exist. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I ain't got no 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 premises to go back and say, hey, watch night or what was what we was just talking about a uh, revival. revival. I mean. The church service going to be a lot of singing, probably. Yeah, probably a lot of praying. Yeah, and maybe a lot of offerings, and maybe a lot of preachers, and maybe a lot of preachers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that, dog. I'm just being honest. I don't like that. I, I, I ain't really on that. You know, I'm totally with you, man. Now, what I did like though, I do like, um, like a roster lineup of preachers, but five ten minutes. I don't want to listen to seven hours of different preachers. You right. give me your best five to 15 minutes and I'll watch four or five of you jokers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Me too. And just see what you got. Right. You know, and hopefully it's something you give me something to make me go look and make sure you're on point. You're on point. I respect it. I'll listen to you some more, but I don't want to listen to preachers for hours somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not most. No, me neither. Yeah. I got a couple. We all have a couple, but yeah, yeah. yeah not most. Yeah, I ain't no, I'm pretty much Darby. That's it. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah. 
Good. And I'm pretty much us. <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. I, there's no church ever in the history of me visiting churches, watching videos or anything that I get more out of than doing what we do here and things that I do on my own. Well, Bless could you. we all Bless agree? Us. Could we all agree that Darby was a prophet? Yes, I believe Darby was a modern. I, want, I, I don't. I don't know him well enough to yeah. say yay or nay. But what I've heard of him so far seems to. I agree. That's why I can't let go of him. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm deciding if. Uh, ML Kimball is valid or not, or a scam. <laughs> He's valid. I love my brother. All right. So we are at um, 36. 30, 30. Okay. Yep. 36. And, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad and as sheep having no shepherd. There saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, meaning there's a lot of people that need to be saved, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few, meaning mm -hmm. the people that are willing to go out and do it. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. So let that be your prayers. That is more people going out, taking the word. But let me go ahead and sign out on here. This video is long enough. Let me turn this off and then uh, bless you. And we'll see you uh, on another Tuesday or Thursday or Sunday or Monday, or whatever day I record something. Peace. Stop share. Stop recording. Let me stop this recording.